The Nation Network presents Coming In Hot. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Coming In Hot. I am Brent Wallace alongside special guest host Jason York as Bobby Ryan remains away for the time being. Uh, Yorkie, again, as always, welcome to another week of the show. Thanks, Wally. I feel very welcome, very welcome on this show of yours. Having a, having a blast. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to have you along. Uh, it's a big week. We're calling this Alfie Week as Alfred, as Daniel Alfredson uh, gets set to go into the Hall of Fame on next Monday. Uh, so we have guests lined up throughout the week to talk about Alfie. Of course, you play with them. We can talk about that as well. Magnus Arvidsson is coming on the show later. We have lots to talk about with him. As always, the show brought to you by Renfrew Pro Tape. Go to RenfrewPro.com. Uh, they are the worldwide leaders in hockey tape. They're the ones with the green cord, by the way. Uh, they do lots of other stuff, and they also do the HDA tape, Hockey uh, Diversity Alliance tape, uh, and others as well, cloth tape, all kinds. And, of course, as always, York, I like to point out, the inventors of shin pad tape. Uh, the fact that Chris Neal, I thought, always used a roll of shin pad tape every time he took to the ice. That's crazy. Eh? You'd be amazed because I know you're a hockey dad, Wally, and I know you know the value of what tape costs. Guys use so yeah. much tape. I remember Neeler in the dressing room. He always did this thing with his skate laces. He'd take the laces when he'd open a fresh pack, and he'd wait for somebody to walk by, and he'd fling it at you, and you'd think the the, the lace was going to catch you in the eye, and he'd just snap it back, kind of like he was fly fishing. Remember that? Well, typically it was me. So, yes, I do remember because he was always <laughs> trying to take my shoe in a scrum. He would all kinds of stuff. He would always try to torment me if he could. Uh, do you know what? I you appreciated know, those. You know one, do you know one of the best jokes that, and we got to get Neil around here, one, one of the best jokes that he ever did, Steve Martins, and you've probably heard this story before. He had this great pair of jeans that he was so proud of, so happy. He came in, strutting the dressing room with these jeans on. Neeler went into his locker and cut the jeans and turned them into like almost jean shorts. So Martins goes to put these on a after the and he's running around. Who did this? Who did this? Who cut my jeans? Uh, Neeler was behind a lot of pranks, man. He's told some good stories uh, on this show in the past. Also about uh, putting a dead fish, if I'm not mistaken, in um, Patrick Weirkosh's <laughs> car. I think it's him. Anyway. He tells all the kinds of good stories. So, uh, yes, Neeler is uh, – he's a open invitation to join our show whenever he wants. Um, still lots to talk about, and that includes uh, the Sens, although we're not going to spend a lot of time. We'd rather talk about Alfie this week, uh, and rightfully so, because the Senators are in a bit of a slump, shall we say, Yorkie. Uh, five straight losses now. There's lots of disgruntled people on social media. Uh, people want change. Do they need to have a different voice? It, it's it's still way too early, and I, and I know people, and this is the problem when when you say some things in the summer, and I and I'll go back. This people have to remember what was talked about this summer. Everybody wants playoffs, and I think the main the main thing I got from all the talks from Pierre Dorian from players was that this team wants to be in the mix come March. They don't want to be hey we're February and we're all of a sudden have no no hope of making the playoffs. It's not at that point right now for the Ottawa Senators. Sure, the start hasn't been, been great, but I'll look at, I could probably only put my finger on two games where I can say, hey, this team needs change. And that was the Florida game and that was the Tampa game. But besides that, Wally, I don't think they've been that bad, especially last game against Philadelphia. I watched that game from start to finish. That that, that game could have went either way. Uh, they. They just couldn't put the puck in the net. They made some mistakes, but they didn't make those mistakes you saw in the Florida and, and the Tampa game. So I'm a big believer. We talked about this last week on the 12 game mark. I know people are worried, well, by the 20 game mark, this team could be out of it. I think it's still too early. Uh, you got to reassess things. And, and honestly, the only time you really have to get rid of your coach right away is when the team has quit on the coach. And when I watch this team right now, they haven't quit on DJ Smith, and, and and I don't know about you, Wally, but it's not a lack of effort. It's um, it's some key mistakes here or there. Some key guys aren't scoring right now. And don't forget, the number one center is out of the lineup, and your best shutdown defenseman in Artem Zub has been out of the lineup as well. You got Tam Cal Cam Talbot back as well. So I want to see where this team's at with Zub back in the lineup. 
because the defense as is uh, just isn't it just on paper and on the ice it's it's uh it's not good enough so you get zoo back into the lineup let's see where they're at but with dj way too early to be talking about firing him right now uh, and I want to get back to the D in a sec about JBD more specifically. But when you talk about the losses, all five, if you take away empty net goals, six of the seven losses, in fact, have been one goal games. So they're in the games for the most part. They're just making some minor mistakes, yeah. which could be the other yeah. way. So is there too much panic, I guess, in the system when we forget they did win four <laughs> in a row? It wasn't that long ago. And everybody was like, hey, everything is great again. And now it's a five-game losing streak. And everybody's like, Okay, we need to get rid of everybody. Yeah. Well, I know I said the 20 game mark, and, and we're going to keep hearing this too that every time there's another game, especially when you're under 500, like the Sens are right now, is this game Tuesday night against Vancouver. It, it, it is an enormous hockey game for, for, for the Ottawa Sens. They're at home, they're playing a team that's, that's in their weight class that on paper they should be able to beat. I know not, no game's easy in this league, but let's see where they're at Tuesday and uh, and go from there with the Ottawa Senators. And like I said, uh, that that a lot of good things, a lot, a lot of grade-A opportunities against Philadelphia. What's the power play? 0 for 11 in their, in their last 11 attempts. That's the one thing I'm – well, that's yeah. the one thing I'm kind of concerned with about the Ottawa Senators. And, and I'll go back to last year. One thing I loved about this team – was the power play. I thought they were really on to something last year, especially late in the season, when you had everything just seemed to be clicking on the power play. Norris was in his spot. You had Batheson in the bumper, mm. Stutzla on that up, Frank, Brady, Kachuk in front of the net, and Shabbat. And I know everybody loved the Debrinket move. I think Alex Debrinket is a, is a fantastic hockey player. Um, I think he's obvious. He's scored 40 goals. But when you bring a guy like that into the fold, if you want him to score at the same clip he's always scored at, he's got to start every power play. He's got to get the majority of the good looks on the power play because that's where this guy makes his living. And I, not that I was scratching my head when they made this when they made this trade, but I'm like, okay, right away I'm saying to myself, this is going to be not tough for DJ. But he's really going to have to p manipulate how he does things because he's going to have to figure out a way how to get Debrinket his looks on the power play. And he's become a little bit of a topic right now because he only has two goals. And you look at every single goal scorer in the league right now, Wally, they get the first looks on every power play. They get that minute and 30, minute and 40 sometimes, and then you get your second unit. DJ will never admit this. The players will never admit this. But it is really difficult to run a team with a 1A and a 1B power play. I was a power play guy, normally on the second unit, which means you get 20, 25 seconds. So if people are wondering why Debrinket only has two goals, there's, there's a real, that's one of the main reasons. It's early on in the season, he wasn't starting power plays. Sometimes he would, but that's, that's tough for a coach, Wally. And, and people might think, ah, it's great. It's great to have options. It's, it's awesome to have a 1A and a 1B. Well, well, talk to me if this team keeps losing and, and all of a sudden Debrinket still has two goals. So not going to be so great. And I know now with, uh, with Norris out of the lineup, it's become a little easier to manage those power plays. But mm. to me, that, that's a reason so far why he has two goals. And it's, it's not DJ's fault. It's not a coaching's fault. It's just in the summer, you brought in more offense. You brought in Debrinket. You brought in Giroux. I, I, I love the Giroux move, but... You didn't address the major need which this team needs, defensemen. And I know you, they don't grow on trees. Maybe that move wasn't there. Maybe that player wasn't there. Um, but here we are. What are we talking about the first uh, little bit of the season here? They need defense, right? And, Yorkie, that leads me into on the defense, and that is – they brought up JBD. They said it was because of potential injuries. They made him skate Friday. He didn't play Saturday. He just sat there, and then they sent him back. Something doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and I think it's the fact that if you're not going to play him, there was something else in the works, and I think they had maybe a potential deal on the table. It fell through, and so he didn't play, but they had him there as an emergency in case the deal came through. Wally, I love your conspiracy theory, man. You're like a sleuth detective <laughs> right now. Hey, I... I when, when, when you lay it to me out like that, it makes a lot of sense because 
why would you bring up a young prospect and and not play him, especially when you're just down the road? And I believe they had two games, right? So he missed at least one, maybe yeah. two games. So, yeah, I I would tend to agree with you. Like nobody knows for sure, but JBD needs to be playing. He needs reps. Every single game he plays is going to help his development. So so to me and to anybody that's looking at it and saying, well, what's he doing here? Um, yeah, you got to practice in, but um he needs to play games and everybody said that that's why they sent him down so um yeah maybe maybe you got something there wally uh and finally uh i don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or not but there's we're I'm gonna go and i'm gonna go back to dj smith and potential coaching change with the team up for sale i don't think that they're going to go out and hire claude Giroux anytime soon they're or, sorry uh claude Giroux. <laughs> so uh well maybe claude Giroux can coach this team i don't know but um so they would likely go with an interim coach and it would have to be either jack campuano who's been a maybe davis Payne, but not likely or uh troy mann they bring up from belleville i don't see them being that disruptive with the team being for sale i just don't see that change until potentially uh in january if that's when the deal comes through that's what i think will happen there won't be a coaching change while this team's for sale well i will see if this team goes into a huge sputter then all of a sudden all of a sudden they're not in games the games aren't entertaining because because right now there's some grumbling a lot of people aren't happy but i'm watching these games these games are still entertaining and they play hard like dj's got these guys playing hard they're a tough team to play against they just keep making mistakes uh and big mistakes so let's see that get cleaned up let's see what happens tuesday let's see what happens at the 20 game mark here for the ottawa senators but i i I would agree with you, Wally. A disruption like this with, with so many people um, talking about the sale of the team right now, all of a sudden you, you throw in a, a coaching firing and you have some instability with the franchise. Um, so f- fans are hoping this team wins. I'll tell you who really wants this team to win right now, ownership. Uh, and not just because of, hey, you make more money when you win, but you also, it's a lot easier to sell a franchise that, smiling faces happy fans um uh, it's like a full restaurant everybody wants to go to a full restaurant well, right wally everyone's waiting and everyone's talking yes. there's a buzz and and hey and, and the sense had the best restaurant going in the summer everybody was not the buzz that was going now it's a little bit it's not it, it's not a buzz kill yet but people yeah. are grumbling but relax let let's let's see what happens coming up here and like i said until you can see players uh, getting outworked, getting out battled, and you're saying, ah, there was a lack of effort tonight. I can honestly say, besides maybe that Florida game, which, and Irvy will tell you this when he comes on, Wally, players never go into a game and don't try. So, like I said, let's see what happens here in the next uh, in the next week or so. Uh, you bring up uh, number 20. Uh, as a 20-game mark, we'll talk a lot about number 20 here in a sec. Uh, the Coming In Hot Show is always brought to you by BEI. Bonisher Excavating Inc. They uh, do complete landscape projects for you. Also, uh, if you need aggregate as well, uh, go to BonisherExcavating.com, 632-613-432-1120. BEI, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. And now, uh, Alfie Week kicks off with number 20 as we go all the way to Sweden to talk to Magnus Arvidsson, otherwise known as The Machine. Arvi, how are you, sir? I'm good. Uh, great to be on your show. I was entertained when I listened to you guys here. It's fun. Arvi, <laughs> Arvi, you we know, try. with your, the last time I saw you, we were in Sweden. Remember when the senators came over for that, uh, yeah. for that series? You look a little lighter up top right now, my friend. You <laughs> yes, I know. More, you lose a few more hairs. What's going on up there? Unfortunately, I do. I, I look old. I see that on the screen here. It's terrible. I, <laughs> But it's the best I can do. I can put a hat on if you want to. Irv, you know, you know who you're looking right now? You're looking like the uh, the transporter there. Remember the movie there? The guy that delivers the car, he's driving the Audi. What's that guy's name, Wally? Wally, Irv, looks exactly I, I like don't... that actor. You know, the guy I'm t- you know the guy I'm talking about? No, but you have so a lot listen, of nickname I just want to... on me, Jorky. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jorky, just go ahead, Wally. Here's Star the thing. Wars. We, we tend not to insult the guests until we're at least like five or 10 minutes into the interview. We usually wait a little bit. Yeah. Uh, our, I, our, I understand. 
<laughs> uh, so, Arby, what are you up to now? Uh, exactly right now, I'm uh, between jobs. Uh, I've been strength and conditioning coach for uh, the team here in, in the city for five years. And uh, now I picked up my golf game again and do that. But if I look out the window now, it's kind of snow, rain outside. So it's it's not much golf now. But we're going to Spain about a couple of weeks playing. Oh. That's going to be nice. Very nice. Now, do you still hang out with any former players? Uh, a little bit contact with the with the Alfie and the Sedins. They're going uh, to the uh-huh. yeah, the pretty good players. So uh, <laughs> Yorkie yeah, asks some questions sometimes when I need help. Uh, Reds, uh, yeah, and then I run into the guys sometimes. Erv. Um, here's a yes. question for you. Um, with the Hall of Fame, it's 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 a huge buzz here in Canada. Like it's a big honor. Mm-hmm. The Hockey Hall of Fame is is, is right here in Toronto. Mm-hmm. This year, there's three Swedish players with the Sedins, Alfie. What what does this mean back in Sweden? Is is it a big talk right now? Is is there a buzz going on? Because I I've been over there. Hockey's big. But as far as the Hockey Hall of Fame, what what does this mean over in Sweden? Uh, you know, when uh, you, you see about this uh, Burya Salming thing, when you get the ALS and stuff, yeah, that that on that's a terrible thing, but it done that a bit bigger because he's going over. That's more talk about Burya going over there now than about Alf and the Sedins. Uh, uh, I, I would say there should be much more buzz and uh, headlines about. Uh, the whole thing it's not that big i think uh, not not now anyway it's a couple of days left but uh, i can't see so much of course they talked about it but not far and like over there not not even close not even close they should okay. they should have more headlines they should have more uh, talk about it because it's so big it's so big we know they've been over in your country but uh, and you know York and Brett too. When you've been over here, when the NHL is over, it's big and everybody. It's exciting about the NHL, but right now, not that much as you maybe think. So, back in 1997, 98, I think that's the first year you joined the Sens. Did you think Alfie, who had just won the Calder, was going to the Hall of Fame? Uh, no, I didn't. But. <laughs> we, ne- we never talked about it so much. <laughs> like, uh, actually, when I when I was over the first couple of years, I had lots of injuries, Alfie, and and had a little bit tough time. And then when you get the C yep. on and stuff, that just went like that for him. And uh, and you see his career after, and all the appreciation in Ottawa land there. It's uh, unbelievable. And you see the stats you have here, how much. M- games he play mostly for the sense uh, and that said uh, that's of course he should be at the hall of fame and uh, you you can't talk enough about how important it was for the team when we played and uh, how successful the team was under his captaincy hey are those uh, th- those early years with the senators were, were a lot of fun and Everybody knows Alfie's story. He was a late draft pick. Uh, he won the Rookie of the Year. Real hardworking guy. I never asked you this. I, I know you were drafted. Uh, was it the fifth fifth round, Arv? You're drafted in. Um, when when you came over, um, number one, what made you decide to come over? And you know your English wasn't great back then. You came over like <laughs> not were, even now. Um, <laughs> We used, we used to remember that the Swedish guys and the English guys, we'd all tease Arv because the Swedish guys would say, Arv, we can't understand you. And then the English guys would say, Arv, we can't understand you either. So we used to say Arv was, he was speaking his, uh, his own language. But Arv, when you came over, like what, uh, I guess, what, what made you decide to come over and, and, and what, what were your initial uh, feelings when you decided to come and then you started playing? Because right away you were a pretty good player. 
Well, I was a little bit older than when I came over, like 26, I think I was 25, 26, and just played the world champion. And uh, we had lots of talk in, in that team that with players who have been over and the players in there that was over. And I just wanted to have a new challenge. We won the championship in Sweden too. And uh, when I get the chance, what, 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 like there was nothing to wait for. And uh, when I came over to Ottawa, I was like, I was so lost. York. I was so lost. I didn't know where to go or anything. Where to? What was the name of oatmeal? I eat oatmeal every morning. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know what, what to buy or anything. I was uh, terrible in English. And uh, then we, they put on, us in this um, hotel, downtown Ottawa. And that was not the greatest area around there too. So you know I. Albert and Bay but Hotel. I'm really, really, I'm really, really glad that I took the chance because, uh, and I, I remember I talked to Donny Mia and I'm going to try this one year, maybe one year, you know, like one year. Yeah, and I, I stayed there at least uh, six years in Ottawa. And that was the best time in my life and the best decision ever for me. And uh, so, Irv, uh, yes, I want to ask you because I forget this was a long time ago. Um, yeah. People still, people still talk here um, about the nickname, the machine. Um, I know part of the story because at training camp, I always loved doing the bench press and the weights. But when you came over, your VO2 was over 70, which is for people who don't know about a VO2 test, Arv's test was like an Olympic athletes. It was crazy. So then you got this nickname. The machine, who gave you that name? And, and uh, do you remember the story? Yes, I remember the story. Can I? I have to swear in this part. Is that okay? Or you can swear. <laughs> Irv, let's, you go right ahead. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, but we had, the coach was shocked, Martin, and he wasn't happy about my performance in the in the first period. So he came in in front of everybody and yelled at me and uh, said. Uh, RV, for fuck's sake, don't uh, don't pussy around like that. You're a fucking machine. And that's that's where it came from. <laughs> so uh, he wanted me to hit more. He wanted me to hit more. And uh, there there it is. It was shock who gave me that. I I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Everybody, here's the thing about don't Jacques pussy Martin. around. Everybody thought Jacques was this quiet coach. And he didn't say anything. He would sit on the bench and look at the clock. I remember him coming in and calling you a pussy. Hey, he came yeah. in once between periods. I had to play against Jagger, and it was kind of tough playing against Jagger. I get a <laughs> minus two after the first period. Comes in, fucking kicks me in the shin pads. Goes, wake the fuck up. Goes, you're <laughs> playing like an idiot out there. And then um, that's good though. So that was the day. After that, Irv. You were just known as the machine, right? And it was all because of Jacques. One of the nicknames I get. <laughs> so, uh, I think actually because you talked about it before that uh, I'm a quiet guy. I didn't talk so much. And I, Jacques is, but I feel the same way. That's why we maybe connect a little bit. We, we actually talked about it a little bit in, in his uh, coaching room. That I, I probably said sometimes that I feel like we are kind of the same. Because, you know, after every summer, we, we get in there and he talked to us and he asked the same question every summer. And it was one minute. It was one minute and the same same question. How was the summer? You worked out? Okay. How's the family? <laughs> you know. But uh, I also remember we got a lot of shit because we had a... We had a high standard in our, in our team and we played really good you know we like uh, we, we won the president trophy and we were on the top all the time so when we when we came back after a bad game we were skated uh, like one game and we we didn't produce and we didn't play we we get skated and i i i also uh, often was thinking do everybody get yelled out like this in in the McDonald's or in the restaurant or in the factory? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so I, he he was he was tough, but he I, he was good too. I I, I liked it. Um, Arv, Wally, I'll so, tell you. I'll tell you what Arv's, I'll tell you what Arv's talking about. After every loss, Jacques would come in. People pay good money to see you guys play, and you play like that. They're coming to see you. You're letting them down. Bullshit. <laughs> and then the next day, yeah, there was no rest back then. I was wondering why we could never keep weight on, and that's why you ate so many bananas, eh, Arv. After every period, you had to have a banana, right? Yeah, you'd call me the banana man too. That was one of my nicknames. <laughs> that was actually, that, that was one thing that I was thinking about. You, you never remember what your teacher said in the school, but what a coach said. There was one coach I had here said that bananas is good. And after that, I eat bananas. You eat bananas in the, in, in, in the periods and you'll be fresh. So I eat bananas. There you go, Arv. Right there for you. Thanks. I brought one for you. <laughs> you Arv, to me. Arv, I need to know, yeah. after Jacques t told you you're the machine, how did your next period go? <laughs> uh, I probably hit a little bit more. I maybe tried to fight <laughs> one time, too. <laughs> Didn't go well. Didn't go well. I actually Are we talking about Tai Domi? No, no, that was not a fight. That was not a fight. But yeah. <laughs> uh, one, maybe twice I had a fight. And uh, after one fight, actually, Shaq come up to me and said, do you know what you should do? And I said, eh, maybe hit more. No, no, keep your gloves on. He actually said this. <laughs> he, uh... he, he probably thought it was embarrassing to see me fight. So. <laughs> <laughs> um you um, did say that you uh struggled when you came over and i will say despite that you were runner up in the selkie trophy voting that year in your rookie year um did you feel like you had accomplished something by that time you know what brett that was actually my second year i i had that and uh uh you know what i i just played and worked hard that's was what i could do i was not a fancy player and uh, i got a little bit buzz of how hard i worked and uh, you know being in line to block shots and maybe play hard every night and uh, you know when there was that uh, ceremony in toronto i i was begging please don't win this, don't win to have this, uh, have this speech in front of Gretzky sitting beside me. And I had a limo with uh, Balfour and all this stuff that was, uh, no, I, I didn't want to win that at that time, but that would be nice now. Interesting. You lost to that. a Finn in Yuri Lettinen. Was that yeah. tough? It wasn't tough. Uh, he was a great player. I think they call him a hockey god. He was small. Yeah. He was good. Yeah. That's yeah. that's pretty crazy, Arv, to think that you're sitting there and and yeah. because you're a humble yeah. guy, you're a, you're a very humble guy, very good guy, and you're just thinking, I don't want to go up there and, no. and talk. Um, and I want to bring something up, and this we're gonna talk about that big injury you had, Arv. Like that was uh, when you went into the boards and you punctured. I think it was your bowel. You punctured. Uh, is it you intestine? Almost, intestine? Yeah, or? you almost, yeah. you almost, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Irv, but you almost, you could have died from that injury, right? Like that was, that was pretty serious, um, that mm. injury you had that night in, uh, I think it was in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I heard like later that uh, this bleeding inside, you can die after 12 hours. And I was lying there, I think I was lying in, 24 hours uh, or more before they find out what was wrong, you know, and um, that was in Philadelphia and that pain that I had there, there was nothing compared. And there was the other injuries like ACL and that was nothing compared to that pain. And uh, we were on the long road trip and I had my new girlfriend that, you know, Therese, and she was came coming over that, uh, that night. And I had to stay at the hot, hot, uh, hotel 
uh, when the team went home and then the ambulance came and picked me up at the, at, at the hotel in the in the morning after the game and then i was lying there for a week wow Are for for younger for younger people younger people that might not have been around back then just maybe go quickly on how that happened it was an open door and you got pushed into the bench uh, there was an open door and I had the full speed down the wing and I, I, I got a hit and uh, the door was open so I was full speed and I, I, I didn't uh, even see the dangers I can, you know, be tied up or anything so I, that was caught by surprise. And uh, yeah, there was like uh, this uh, nerves that was burning inside me was... Uh, yeah, never felt it after or before, and uh, it was uh, they actually took me out in in Philly's uh, locker room after from the ice. It was not in our room or anything like that. A funny story was though when I came back after one week in in, in Philadelphia, in, in, in there, I I was standing beside beside Sami Salo, like one meter beside him, and he couldn't recognize me because I lost so much weight. I, I gained 10 kilos in the hospital of morphine, and then I lost uh, from a regular 10 kilos down. So 20 kilos for in one week. Uh, so wow. uh, Sami Salah was standing and he didn't recognize me. I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I will bring up a happier, uh, moment against the Flyers, your first NHL goal, which yeah. was 25 years ago yesterday, November the 6th. Oh. Do you remember who assisted on your goal? I think it was Sean Van Allen. No? Was it? And? <laughs> uh, this is a guess, just a guess. Maybe Lambert? No. Jason, Jason York. York. Jason, of course. Of course. And Irv, everything everything comes full circle, right? Here you are. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Vanner yeah. and Yorkie assisted on your first NHL goal. Oh, my God. That's big to get an essay um, from you, Yorkie. Well, Wally, I want to ask Irvy, um, this is pretty cool. It's, it's, it's always fun when things come full circle. Um, Irv has a son named Adam. And uh, right now, our, your son is playing Div 1 hockey at Merrimack College in the States, and he's a defenseman, right? Yes. Yeah. And how's it going? Yeah, he, uh, he had a tough first year last year, and uh, they had a great team. They, they played uh, greater than ever, and they actually, I think, they send away like four players, two defensemen to the NHL to this year. So they had, he had a lots of competition last year and it started good. He uh, scored one, go his first goal in one of the first games in the season, uh, uh, overtime goal, and then it went downhill <laughs> from there. So he had a tough time to uh, make the team and make the uh, lineup. Uh, so he worked hard this summer and now he's playing and they're uh, playing uh, good and the team is doing good. They beat Boston College two games back back to back uh, this weekend. Uh, this is a small college, but uh, they have a good, they have a good team and they play good. And I, I, when I was over there, I, I, afterwards I was I was I missed that I didn't see out of our sixty sevens or go and see more junior games and uh, see the atmosphere around Canadian hockey and this college hockey. And uh, I'm surprised that the college hockey is so good that it is. It's much mm -hmm. more better than I thought. Does he have the? Uh, does Adam have the machine genes like like his dad? Uh, and what is this genes? <laughs> oh, the fitness. He's in good shape. Is he? Is he like you are? Did he go in there and? Uh, did Adam go in there and win the? He fitness has the hair. He has the hair. See the look. <laughs> well, good. Good flow. Yeah, good flow. Uh, he's the defenseman. He's a late bloomer. Uh, he is like I was. Uh, uh, 
like, he need more weight. He, like he is like 10 kilos too light and uh, it's pretty speedy, but he can use it more. But most of all, he's like his mother too, too, um, not he thinks enough. too much smart. <laughs> he's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. And uh, <laughs> he, he should be a little bit more angry and tougher. And, and you, you <laughs> probably thinking the same thing about me. You should be that too. <laughs> well, uh, I I, 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 listen, I loved how you played the game, man. You, you played the game. Like I like to call it from the tips, man. Hard guy to play against. Um, I remember I a lot actually of people... when we, Yorkie, when we're sitting here, I remember you said in the paper, I have it somewhere here. I actually scored a hat trick once. And you said in the interview after, it's like see a man playing against the juniors. That's what you said about yep. that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> Good memory, Irv. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite memory of Alfie? Or do you have a moment uh, when it comes to Alfie that sticks out in your mind? Uh, what? When I think back of Alfie, I, I, I think about the things beside the eyes when he now, when we have a moment, me and Alfie, when he can, mm -hmm. when we were at the road and he shouted at me, come and sit here. And, and we were just sitting and talking about comparing Colorado against Detroit. Who do you think is best? How do you think they're playing? What do you think is inter? Or we're sitting comparing players. Like uh, these moments I really appreciate. And I think I like most of Alfie. The, like uh, you know, off off ice, off ice stuff. Was was he different? Like, I know you you guys were young coming up together, so there's a, and a lot of you were at the same time, pretty young team, much like the Ottawa Senators are now. But did you see that he was perhaps different or a little more special? I know he had just won the Calder, and and two years later he was becoming the uh, the captain. But did you see something different in him that stood out? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that probably not many people know about is like he was searching to find the the best way for him, like uh, on the ice. Like he, I don't know if you have the the thing we we talk about. That you have a fox behind your ear over here. It's a, that's a saying, and he have that. He is exactly that thing that it. He is thinking uh, about what should do his game better and what find his way on the ice. Yeah. What his what is uh, you know because uh, I, I think that's uh, what stands out for him. Like he working on his uh, equipment to be exactly the perfect one, or you know you know understand what I'm saying. Like he yeah, he's the find his way. he's the ultimate competitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Arv, 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 just, just, just to pick up on something you said there, and, and Arv, he put up, or sorry, Alfie, he put up some points. He could score. He could uh, pass the puck. Smart player. Um, I was a defenseman, but, you know, in the stick room, Alfie would be in that stick room, and this was before composite sticks. He had the old Sherwood. Remember the Sherwood he had? And he'd be in there for a half an hour, 40 minutes, working on his stick, making it perfect. And I'm in there too, working on my stick, making it perfect. <laughs> but I'm like, does it really matter what I'm using? Because all I'm gonna do is get the puck and pass it. And I'd always laugh, because the stick room's a funny place. The scorers will be in there. There'll be a, a defenseman. You never know who you're gonna run into in the stick room. Is right, Arv, some guys are working on their sticks all the time. Some guys are fixated with their skates. Alfie was a stick guy. I remember him in that stick room, just always trying to get the perfect lie, shaving it, the curve. And uh, but I, and then there was me. I had no business being in. No, there. but <laughs> I should have just took anything. No, but then uh, came the period when he was working on his shot. You know, like standing there and and. Uh, all you, you you think that all the players do that, but he he was actually thinking what where he was shooting and how he should shoot, 
and then he, he started with this uh, one against one game after the practice when he was working on his mm -hmm. it's not just for fun i i i'm I mean, believe that he was thinking that I need to work on this. This is going to help me in the game. It's not just a fun game. Uh, ways like that. I, and, uh, you know, a funny story about his work ethic too. I called him in the summer and uh, we talked about, uh, you know, strength and conditioning. And he said to me like this, because this is how Swedes are. Uh, Force Bay and Nasland and me too were like this. We, we said to the friends that we don't work. We don't, we take it easy. We don't work out. So, but I called Alfie and he said to me, now I haven't started working out yet. And then later in the conversation, he said, I pull my backside uh, when I was running, but you said to me before that you didn't work out. So like he, he was like a hard working guy, but it, <laughs> we, we didn't talk about it. Like stuff like that. He, he worked hard. He had the greatest hockey sense uh, to read the game and feel the game and find a way on the ice what was best for him. Stuff like that. Was he a, was he a natural leader? Yes, showing on the ice. Absolutely showing on the ice. And then in this dressing room in Ottawa, he got the respect with him. And you have to do something with your personality to get that, to get that respect. You, 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 you have to be a good guy and you have to read the situation and find a way in the dressing room too, to get that. Was it awkward Harvey, know... when Yash comes back, once at Yorkie, when Yash came back and Alfie was already given the C, was it awkward in the room for a bit? You know what, I, I remember that. I, I can't I can't remember the feeling Yorkie maybe does but uh, I was new and I have uh, I have to concentrate on myself to just find my yeah. way so I have but I I know I, have, I remember the bus and remember the talk and that everybody was saying that Alfie should have the C you know they, I remember stuff but I uh, Yorkie you probably no better than me about that. I, I was just going to say, I, I, I don't know if you're, well, you, I, you probably remember it was the, the first, the first playoff. You came over in, um, our, for the, did you remember the New Jersey series? Yes. Yeah. Do you, do you remember, and this, this to me was Alfie's, what I call coming out party. And I was, I was actually with Alfie last week and I asked him about it and he had a big smile on his face. He, we were the eighth seeded team. New Jersey was one. They had yeah. Martin Brewer. We beat them in the first round and nobody thought it would be possible. And I remember Scott Niedemeyer going head to head with Alfie and Alfie played. It wasn't what he was doing. Um, I'm going to say scoring. It was more physical. He was so physical on Niedemeyer that series. I remember he ran him over with some big hits a couple times and it kind of lifted up our whole team or like, wow, this guy is, this guy is the leader of the team and he's doing it like you said, by what he's doing it on the ice. And I, the job he did on Niedemeyer that series, I'm like, okay, we all kind of knew who the captain of the team was after that series. And to me, that's, that's when Alfie had his, I know he was the rookie of the year and all that, but, but that series in the playoffs to me, it's what you do in the playoffs. And that was an Alfie that, that elevated his game. And then after that, he was, in my mind, he was the captain. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that he recognition did the see where he should need to do the the work. And there was Niedermeyer and he showed the whole team that, that smartness. If I were to mention one particular team name, I want to know what comes to mind if I say the Toronto Maple Leafs. Our boogie team. Our, you know, I, I don't like them. <laughs> and I, they, we have a tough time against them all the time. All the time. It's like that Toronto Maple Leafs have the tough time against Philadelphia and we beat Philadelphia. You know, that's, 
Yeah. I, and it was tough. Philadelphia, well, Toronto is a tough team. They were good. Uh, but we didn't, we, we didn't from do the... our job. We didn't do our job. We were, we, we were not doing a job there. I don't know what happened against them. Uh, the, the regular season was completely different because you always dominated the regular season. Did you enjoy those battles of Ontario? Yeah, I did. But when I'm thinking back now, it was like uh, weird too, because when we play in Ottawa, it was as many Toronto fans in the, st in the, in the building as the Ottawa fans. I didn't like that. I, I, I just remember that now. <laughs> but we have a okay. tough time against them. And, but you know what? We were as, we we played great. We had a great team. Uh, it, it, but with Toronto's resources, like I guess they had like 80, 90 million dollar team and we had a 30 million dollar team to compete with. And in front in, before every playoffs. They brought in lots of big names, yeah. and yeah. we couldn't do that. That was an excuse, but that was that, that <laughs> how it was. Arab, it's still the same. The building still has lots of Leaf fans whenever they come, so nothing's changed. No, I, I, I was true. actually having a contract from 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 Toronto when I'm move, moving to Vancouver. Uh, really? I, Whoa, okay, wait a second. Stop. You yeah, were going to play I, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. No, 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 no. I, I, no, no. I, I, I didn't. But I, they, they, they called and they, I had a contract from them. Like, but I, I went to Vancouver. That was great. How, okay, wait. How close were you to signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs? I wasn't close at all. I didn't. No, no, I'm not. I moved, rather move to Sweden than go to Toronto. <laughs> so, Irv, you, you, did, Irv, you didn't go to Toronto out of spite, which means because you didn't like them. Otherwise, money was the same and everything. You just said, I'm not going to Toronto because I hate the oh. Leafs. Something like that, Jordan. Maybe not hating the Leafs, but I, I, I wasn't feeling right to go there. That's gotcha. put it that way. Put it that way. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I didn't yeah. know this at all. Wow. So Herbs, did, did you I enjoy many... Vancouver? Uh, yes, it was, uh, you know, when you go out there, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. And we had uh, lots of Swedes there and we were a good team yeah. too. But we had some uh, tough injuries in the end of the season. You know, there was, uh, but we had a team that could went the whole way. Uh, I think so. But we, some, like I said, we had, we had a Bertuzzi incident. Uh, right. yeah. And of course I get the ACL, ACL uh, knee problem. That, so that ended your career, course. right? Yeah, 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 I tried to come back here in Sweden and, and then lock out season, but that was more, that was more the back who ended the career, the back, yeah. So basically, uh, you played on a line at some point with Alfie and then you played on a line with the Sedin. So you're responsible for three people going into the Hall of Fame this year. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all about me. That's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Wally. A, a, a funny story is that uh, Mark Crawford came up to me and said, "How can we get your get your points up more?" And I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, I I don't know. But then he put me with the Sedins, the the four last games that I played in NHL, he put me with the Sedins, and I was like, it was a mad. There was a magical feeling, and uh, that felt like a play with the with the Harlem Globetrotters, and I was the <laughs> I was the first star in three of these games when I played with them. And that was the that was oh, the, wow. my last games in the in the in the NHL with the with the Sedins. 
Hey, w Wally, you, well, I had no idea. Arv is like an onion. There are so many layers to Arv. I didn't know there was this many stories, Arv. <laughs> you bring them out of me. I, I took a couple of beers, then, I, you know. <laughs> hey, well, Arv, Arv, Arv was nervous before he came on. He's like, my English isn't great. Uh, I'm not good on the computers. But here he is. We, we could talk all day Arv. these are uh some great stories and imagine if you would have played with sadines for a couple more years the size of the contract you would have got wow yeah that was fun to play with them they were the and great great guys of the of the ice like like alfie and they, they these guys deserved it this hall of fame of course of course uh harvey what you, one thing i gotta this. i gotta bring up yeah sorry go ahead wally Go ahead. Well, Arby, I'm helping my neighbor one day move his stuff and we're in the garage and I look over in the corner and there's like a stick and it's got writing on it. And I'm like, whose is that? Anyway, I've got a Magnus Arvidsson stick signed. Wow. <laughs> look at that toe. It's like it's straight. Anyway. It looks this like this classic. pizza thing. You put out the pizza from the oven. <laughs> this this could be like I'm gonna put this on eBay at some point. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's a cherished item in my collection. Five cent. <laughs> I love it. I, I, um, I, actually, will guys, you... I heard. You... Sorry, Wally. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I heard you before when you talk about the sense the the this team today. And York, you said that uh, about one guy there, because I, I thought about the team here in Sweden. That I think it's so dangerous now and see these players just waiting to get the points in power play. You talked about uh, you have to get the more power play in time and stuff. Five against five, hard work. You should have a scoring. You, you should have a scoring uh, leading for five against five. It's too many players waiting just to play power play to get third points. Not the team, not the team player, like work for the team. It's more, it's too much. And that's go not going to be good for the team. I think that they are chasing their own uh, points. You know, you, you know what I mean, Yorkie? Oh, Irv, you're 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 a Sel you're a selkie you're a selkie finalist. I'm a defenseman. Do you, do you know what defensemen always say? You know what this? We'd be at the end of the bench. We'd be talking about the forwards. We're like, you can never trust a forward. Don't trust him because he's not going to back check. But you, Irv, I could say this, man. We could trust you. You're always first one on the back check. Yeah, but I I just want to come back to that. That it's too many players that are just waiting to. For the power play time to get their points in five against five they just go out there and do not the extra job and that's i think it's too dangerous in the, in, in the team to have too much and and the, the other reflection of the sense now i haven't seen a game i just listened to you they missed too many players like you yorkie and phillips and chara you know stables defensemen it sounds like reds yes yeah well Good D men don't grow on trees, Irv. No, no, I know. <laughs> Not like bananas. Uh, yeah, Irv, we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, it's been fun, and probably we'll have to do this again uh, another time. But I've uh, I've enjoyed catching up with you. It's always been a pleasure. You've always been one of the the true cult leaders here in Ottawa. People just love talking about Magnus Arvidsson. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for having me. It was great. Not my English, but it was great to see you guys. And Yorkie, as I said, like it's always nice to catch up with these guys. And you play with them, and I know you don't get to talk to everybody very often. Uh, just good to hear the stories once again. And for me, uh, I saw it on the outside looking in. Uh, it's always, and you hear parts, but you never get the full story. That's the stuff I love to hear. Uh, it's, it's gold. And, and I, Arvi, when I talked to him last night, was so nervous to come on. And you heard a story about him not wanting to go up to win the Selkie because he was afraid about no. talking in front of people. But he's a guy, and a lot of people think, oh, guys playing NHL, they're cocky, this, that. 
Irvy was a quiet, humble guy that hated the spotlight and just, you heard him, just, just worked hard. Um, and I would say even lacked a little bit of confidence. Like, it, believe it or not, a guy like him yes. lacked a little bit of confidence. Uh, and, and, and that's part of the battle playing in the league. And that, that's what separates guys from being like superstars. They just have that huge belief of themselves. But great person, great guy. Um, I got so much time for Magnus Arvidsson. And uh, like I told you before, Wally, it's it's the stories off the ice. And uh, the games themselves are great. But it's the friendships and the little things, bugging guys, teasing guys. Uh, those little memories are awesome. And Arvey is one of the real good guys in the game. He is. And I always missed him when he when he signed in Vancouver. You're like, man, you just – there's certain players you know that you're going to miss. He was always one of them because he was just genuinely a yeah. really good guy. Um, before we go, uh, JBD was recalled. So we start the show with him being sent down. We'll close it out with him being recalled. <laughs> he's got to he's got to play. You can't do this now. Like well, He's got to play Tuesday. And besides, yeah. you've lost five in a row. You've got to make a change. Well, maybe there's something to your conspiracy theory. Maybe there's something in the works right now, Wally. Maybe a big trade or something, but I would think he's in for sure. I would uh, I would bet this time he gets into the lineup, and especially after losing, uh, they've lost five in a row. So um, great time to put him in, and, let, and let's see what the kid can do. Uh, and my other part to that is, did they maybe not play him against Philadelphia because the Flyers have been playing so well and they've been pretty dangerous that they didn't want to basically throw him into the fire? Well, also, too, Zaitsev was pretty good the game before the Philadelphia game. And if you're yep. going to take a guy out of the lineup, like he was better um, and uh, Holden. So maybe it was, a, maybe it was one of those cases where, where DJ wanted to give one of the veterans one more shot. Okay, let's see. And then all of a sudden you lose again. Okay, now we're putting Docker into the lineup. Otherwise, otherwise I got nothing for you, bud, because I don't know why he was, I don't know why you recall him and don't play him, but. Who knows? Maybe there is a trade. Maybe there's more to it. But I would think this time around, he uh, for sure gets into the lineup. I would think. Uh, last question I got for you. How much money do you think Claude Giroux put on the board to play against a team he played a thousand games against? Well, let me think right now. Uh, inflation is up. Uh, goods are more. So that's going to mean your, your $100 is really $200. So... Normally, a guy like that's putting at least a grand up on the board. So, man, but Claude's a great guy, and he's a I team guy. I think it's guy. five grand. Yeah, yeah, I was good. I I think there's a. I think there might be a five in there, Wally, because I know what the, he's. Um, yeah, I, I if I'm going to go over under, I'm going to say the 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 uh, the line is five grand on this one. I'm going to go five. Yeah, like how much does that one burn, just on the inside when you're <laughs> ultra competitive? Right, you score yeah. against your former team. All the nerves. You're in front of your home fans. You want to show and, that it was the right move, and then boom. And and Wally, how good has Claude Giroux been? He's come in exactly as advertised. Uh, I, I think he's been. It's been a great signing. His faceoffs. His is just. The Sens haven't had a guy like this in a while. The presence. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Uh, just having that guy around, it is so invaluable for a young hockey club. Uh, love the signing then, and I know they're not the, – statistically right now, the team doesn't look good on paper, but I think Claude has done everything and more so far for, for what he was advertised as bringing in. Yeah, I, uh, no, I think it's, it's bang on. And I started to look uh, – I went back over his last six, seven years to see his point totals after 10 games, and he had nine, I think, for Ottawa. And that's pretty much where he's – like. He's been 10, 12. Uh, I think yeah. the last time he had nine or less was like six years ago. Like he always mm -hmm. starts well. He's always consistent. He just continues to bring that game each and every night. And I know they've lost five in a row and all that stuff, but he looks like he belongs. I believe that it's a very good deal to have him uh, in Ottawa. I tell, you, I tell you what, I know for a fact how hard Claude Giroux works in the summer. I see him out at the Sensplex. I see him working on his skating. I know he puts the time in the gym, and he's for an older guy. That's what you want around your group—a guy that 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 does what he talks about. It's one thing to talk about it, but you got to do it too as a younger guy. And uh, like I said, Claude has been uh, 
everything advertised. And uh, if you want to look at a, a positive so far on this hockey club, uh, besides Sanderson and a couple other nice stories, I think Claude has been a, a, a real, Claude Drew has been a real positive for this team so far. And when it comes to positive, that's what I consider you to be, just a positive person. Uh, so with Thanks. that, we're going to close up the show for Monday. We appreciate you stopping by. This is Coming In Hot presented by Renfrew Pro Tape. Go to renfrewpro.com. Uh, we'll see you on Tuesday, everybody.